Hey all and welcome back to another amazing diorama project. Today I'll be walking you through the creation of this cool looking cross section of a small dam wall. I don't know what it is, but I find this model fascinating to look at. Maybe it's the water flowing violently out from the pipe, or being able to see the corridor that traverses through the center of the dam. Whatever it is, it's certainly a fun model to look at. This video is sponsored by Scenorama. Scenorama have a large range of diorama kits perfect for anyone wanting to create a unique model and need a good foundation to start with. For this build, I'm using the water diorama kit. It comes with the basic scenery material you need to get started, but when you supplement those materials with a range of products from Woodland Scenics, you can really create something amazing. If you want to check out the full range of products, you can visit scenorama.woodlandscenics.com. The main feature of the diorama will be the dam wall. I drew inspiration from the box art in deciding on this project. To create the templates for the dam wall, I used Adobe Illustrator. All the drawings I use for this model will be available on my website, so if you don't have a similar program, you'll still be able to download the templates and print them out yourself. Once the templates are printed, I glue them to a piece of foam board. For the parts that make up the core of the dam, I just use cheap foam core board from the office store. However, for the outer shell, I'll use higher quality foam board from Woodland Scenics. Using a sharp hobby knife, I carefully cut around each shape. Fixing it all together with hot glue. I like to use hot glue when I can because it's fast and it allows me to move on to the next step quicker. I'm not having to sit around and wait for the glue to dry. I'm also including some 3D printed parts. These will also be available on my website, however they are not essential to the build. You can quite easily make this dam without the additional 3D printed details. But that said, I definitely recommend investing in a 3D printer if you're planning on doing more dioramas like this. It's a bit of a learning curve, but once you learn the basics and take the proper safety precautions when using resin 3D printers, they can be a lot of fun. Like most other plastic parts, the 3D printed details have any support material removed and any imperfections can be sanded away. As for painting, once the parts are clean, I give them a grey undercoat. The process to get the cement look is done using Woodland Scenics concrete, along with some various Vallejo greys, and lastly, some MIG oil paint made into a wash. The Woodland Scenics paint isn't really formulated for an airbrush, however once it's thinned down, it sprays quite well. The real change comes when adding the speckled effect. To do this, I turn the air pressure down very low. The result is a very speckled paint flow. Now I just apply the paint in this pattern all over the separate parts, starting with the dark gray, and then gradually stepping up to the lighter ivory in the end. After that's had time to dry, I apply the oil wash. The color is MIG Starship Filth, and it's thinned down in enamel thinners to create the wash. It's liberally applied all over the separate parts. Other detail is added using styrene parts and some lights are also added. These were 3D printed in clear resin and glued over the small opening in the roof. When you hold an LED over the back, it gives quite a nice effect. Finally, it gets a light dusting using some weathering powders. The parts can be assembled using super glue. Adding baking soda acts as an accelerator, as well as a filler should there be any small gaps. The lighting effects are done with Woodland Scenics Just Plug Lights. No soldering is needed. It's basically a plug and play type setup. I used warm white nano LEDs and glued them above each of the light openings. Before gluing each section in place, it's a good idea to test the lights just to be sure they work properly. Now it's just a matter of gluing each part in place. I do my best to at least get the first doorway on straight. 
The hallways are designed to press fit snugly in between each doorway and just a little bit of super glue should be enough to hold them in place. However, just to be sure, I also went around with some hot glue as a backup. The shell of the dam is done using Woodland Scenics modelling sheets. They come in a variety of thicknesses. To form the curved dam front, I used a thinner one that is easy to bend. I initially make a rough cut so that there is a little bit of overhang and then I glue it onto the dam wall support structure with some hot glue. Then simply it's a matter of trimming away any overhanging material. The same is done for the back wall as well. The foam can be lightly sanded to get a nice flat finish if needed. For large flat sections of foam, using the hot glue can be a little bit tricky. In these situations, I use foam tack glue. I apply the glue to both sides, spread it out and then let it partially dry. It will become tacky after about 10 minutes. A hair dryer can also speed up the process. Now I press the two parts together for an instant bond. Small strips of foam is cut and added to the edges to neaten up the sides and the base section can be attached as well. Once of course a hole has been cut for the wires. Foam putty is perfect for filling in any gaps. It's basically a liquid foam. In preparation for the foam as well as painting, I mask off the openings to the access tunnel. Foam putty is very soft and can be applied with putty tools or just as easily with your fingers. It can be used to fill large areas as well, as it doesn't shrink for the most part. I used it to raise the entire edge of the dam face by about 2mm, and it worked perfectly. All the products I used throughout the video will be listed in the description below, with links to Scenorama and Woodland Scenics. So if you see a product I'm using and want to find out more, you'll be able to find it below. Once dry, it can be sanded to get the perfect finish. Just be careful you don't accidentally dent the foam as it's quite soft and a fingernail can do quite a bit of damage. Even this large area of foam putty sands back really nice. The painting process is just the same as the tunnel. The only difference is I start with a black undercoat instead of grey. I also used a paper towel to stipple over the oil wash and once dry I applied a light misting of the concrete colour to tie it all together and lighten the model just a touch. As for the overflow pipes, they are painted a rust undercoat. I added some areas of lighter rust as well with some speckled rust effects. Next I apply a liberal coating of Vallejo chipping medium. After allowing that layer to dry, I come in with a grey top coat. To get the peeling paint effect, all I need to do is wet a brush and gently rub it over the areas I want to have any paint removed. It leaves behind a very nice chipped peeling paint effect. Then the pipes are masked and the cement technique is painted in the desired areas. The pipes are hot glued to the front of the dam wall. Because the hot glue hardens quite fast, I found by applying the glue onto the pipes and then reheating the glue just before pressing the pipes onto the wall, it worked much better. To weather the wall, some more weathering powder was used, simulating dirt and grime buildup, as well as streaking down the face of the dam wall. Now for the real transformation, land forming. I'm using the Scenorama large project base to house the model. To raise it up I'm adding a layer of polystyrene. This will enable me to cut into it later to create some depth for the river. I've found that using polyurethane glue works best when gluing large sections of foam. And for smooth surfaces, it helps to roughly sand it before gluing. Just make sure to weigh it down as it cures so that it doesn't move as the foam expands while it cures. Before I glue down the dam wall, I need to cut a hole for the wires. And while the diorama is free from terrain, I'll also attach the lighting components. 
It's not required, however to make connecting and disconnecting the power cord easier for this project, I added a small plug to the wire. Hot glue is more than enough to hold the light hub in place. Once the dam wall has been permanently glued onto the top of the surface, we can thread the wires down through the hole and plug it into the light hub. A quick test shows everything is working properly. Dams usually have rocky surroundings. I'm using lightweight hydrocal to create the rock face using a variety of Woolen Scenics rock moulds. The hydrocal is mixed up as per the instructions. Before pouring into the mould, I make sure to pre-wet the mould. This helps the plaster get right down into the small cracks and also helps to prevent bubbles. Tapping the mould after filling it also helps remove the bubbles. You don't always need to completely fill the mould either. By only filling it part way, you can get different styles of rocks. Once dry, the rocks are released from the mould. A piece of foam is used along the back edge of the diorama and the terrain contour is drawn onto the foam. Once happy, the foam is cut following the contour we drew and it can then be fixed in place with hot glue. I used some machinist blocks to help me ensure it was standing vertically. Filling in the hillside is straightforward. Old newspaper would be perfect, however in the absence of old newspaper, any other type of paper will work along with some masking tape. The paper gets scrunched up and used to fill in the area. Once there's a sufficient amount of paper, I use a small strip of tape to hold it down so that it doesn't move. Because there's going to be a lot of plaster, paint and glue being sprayed around, I'm using some clear plastic wrap to cover the dam so that it will be protected while I work on the rest of the scenery. The Scenorama kit comes with everything you need for a simple water feature, including some foam, cardboard, glue, realistic water, terrain paints and some scenic foams. For this diorama however, I'll need some additional items to fill out the scene. And because I'm doing a large water feature, I'll be using the Woodland Scenics Deep Pour Water instead. I will however be using the plaster cloth next, which is supplied in the kit. The plaster cloth works best when cut into much smaller strips or squares, especially for small areas like this diorama. It's very simple to use. Just soak each piece for a few seconds in the water and then place it over the desired area. Additional pieces overlap the last piece to build up strength. Gently rubbing the plaster cloth will help spread the plaster and ensure the layers bond to each other. I make sure to get right up into the corners of the dam wall as well. The lightweight hydrocal is very easy to carve when dry. This allows me to easily carve the rocks so I can get them to fit nice and snug around the edge of the dam wall. I roughly test where each rock will be placed before fixing it permanently into position with more plaster. Using some hydrocal, paper towels and a blender, I'm going to make some DIY sculptor mold. The paper towels need to be cut up into very small strips so they can be torn up in the blender. Next, put them through the blender for about a minute or two until the paper towel is completely torn up into a light fluff. It's probably best to use a cheap blender for stuff like this. This one cost me $10 from Kmart. Now that we have a nice fluffy mountain, all we need to do is add a small amount of hydrocal. Add water and mix it up to make the paste. Let's call this modeling paste. Before I place it around the rocks, I first need to pre-wet the rocks so that our plaster will stick. Next I place the rocks in position and fill around them with the modeling paste. The plaster basically glues them down to the plaster cloth while also making the rocks blend together realistically. The texture from the paper towel and the plaster helps give that rocky appearance. However, if you want it perfectly smooth, keep working the plaster until you get the desired look. I want the river to descend below the surface, so I'm starting to carve the riverbank into the foam. I do this quite roughly because I'm going to use the modelling paste to shape the bank exactly how I want it. So don't be afraid to really hack into the foam because we can always come back and fill it in later with plaster. You can see just how useful our DIY modelling plaster is. You can do so much with it. 
It's great for filling in large areas and the lightweight hydrocal ensures that it's not too heavy. I want the bank to be smooth so I keep working it as it starts to set. This gives a very smooth finish. Moldesine plaster is a close equivalent from Woodland Scenics. I'm going to use this on the riverbed portions. It's mixed in a similar fashion to the modelling plaster. A liberal amount is used to completely cover the riverbed. It too can be smoothed out as it starts to set, but it also has a more of a grainy texture, which is perfect for the bottom of a river or for any rough terrain on a hillside or mountain. But if you need it to be completely smooth, you can also sand it once it has completely dried out. To paint the rocks, I started off trying the leopard spotting technique using a range of liquid pigments. These are mixed roughly 16 parts water to one part pigment. However, the black is mixed 32 to one. Just like the name suggests, I spot on the color randomly across the rocks. Starting with the lighter color followed by the darker colors. In the end, I didn't quite get the color I was after. So I went over the top with some grays and browns while also allowing some of the leopard spotting layers to show through as well. Finally, I dry brushed some off-white over the top to highlight the edges and raised areas of the rocks. The dirt texture layer is next. It's simply some backyard dirt sifted and mixed with tile grout. I tend to use a light beige grout to help lighten the dirt because once the glue is applied, the dirt alone will tend to dry very dark. A little bit of static tack diluted with some scenic cement applied to the sloping areas will help the dirt stick and prevent it from rolling down and accumulating at the bottom. The larger dirt texture is applied first, followed by a fine texture applied over the top. The entire area is covered. I make sure to dust away any unwanted dirt from the rock surfaces that I want to be clean. To fix that layer in place, I first mist over some isopropyl alcohol and follow that with some scenic cement through a spray bottle. Getting a good spray bottle with a nice fine mist is desirable to prevent the dirt being moved by large water droplets. Any pooling can be soaked up with a paper towel and it's also a good idea to remove excess glue from the rock surfaces. Static grass is one of my favourite details and the Woodland Scenic Static King is ideal for applying the static grass. I'm mixing a little bit of medium and light 4mm grass to get the colour I'm after. With the lid on, it's ready to use. Static tack is applied to any areas I want the grass. I start by dabbing the glue onto the dirt and then spreading it further with an old brush. I try to be random and make sure to leave little patches of visible dirt between the glue for a patchier grass look. Now I can turn on the static king, place the negative grounding wire close to where I'll be adding the grass and gently shake the applicator over the glue, holding it just a few centimeters above the surface. To remove excess grass, a stocking over the end of a vacuum cleaner will allow me to collect the excess and use it on other areas of the diorama. Now for bushes and weeds. The Scenorama kit comes with a selection of ground foam. However, for this project, I'm using some extras to get a larger variety of color and texture. Loose rubble below the rocky R croppings can be made using natural talus. This pack comes in the Scenorama kit. The natural color is much too white, so to get the color much closer to the rocks on the diorama, I'll color them to a dark gray. A little bit of black pigment diluted with water should be fine. Once they have had time to dry, I can scatter them along the model. Next, I just work my way through the various ground foams, adding splashes of color here and there and using different grades and textures to build up bushes and weeds. I also find once the coarse turf is down, going over it with some fine turf texture helps tie it into the rest of the scenery. It also helps to add a very fine leafy structure to the coarse foam as well. Once happy with the covering, it all gets permanently fixed with a misting of isopropyl alcohol and scenic cement. Again, you can soak up any pooling with a paper towel. Now for some larger trees. My favorite trees to make are the Woodland Scenics tree armatures with some fine leaf foliage. 
For DIY trees, it's hard to beat the realistic look you can achieve. The armatures are really easy to use. Once the base has been removed, I can twist the branches out, doing my best to create a natural looking spread of branches. Next, each tree is painted the desired colour, depending on what type of tree you're trying to model. To attach the leaves, the tips of each branch is coated with hobby tack. Once applied, the glue is left to dry. It will dry clear and become very sticky. While the tree is dry, I'll prepare the foliage. Finally, foliage on its own can make some fantastic standalone trees. However, for the armatures, I'll need to break off some smaller branches. These smaller pieces can now be pressed onto each of the individual branches on the armature. It's a time consuming process, but well worth the effort. To give the branches a bit more strength, I also apply a drop of super glue to each branch just to make sure the finely foliage doesn't fall off when we get those really hot, humid days. And now we have a fantastic looking tree. Planting the tree is just a matter of drilling a hole, applying a dab of glue and pressing the tree into the hole making sure it's standing straight. I also make sure to apply smaller bushes using the fine leaf foliage. It works really well to create a break along the back edge of the diorama. Before adding water, I paint the riverbed a darker brown to help simulate deeper water. The dam for the resin is made with some thin acrylic. Hot glue is used along the edges to ensure there is a watertight seal. You want to make sure it's very well sealed because even a small leak can make a big mess if you don't spot it straight away. Now the real fun begins, adding water. Woodland Scenic's deep pour water will be perfect for this project. It's quite straightforward to use. Just make sure to really read through the instructions to ensure you get the best results you can. They really leave nothing out. Everything you need to know can be found in that small booklet. Here's a brief rundown. I carefully measure just how much I'll need and I make markings on the cup so I don't accidentally get it wrong. The bottles are inserted into the waterproof bag and then placed in some warm tap water. Remove the bottles from the water and bag after 15 minutes. The bottles should feel warm, not hot. Slowly tilt the bottles back and forth for 5 seconds to ensure the contents are at an even temperature. Do not shake the bottles and then use them immediately. Now we can pour out the required amounts and start mixing. For optimal results I mix for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes I cover the top and let the resin sit for another 5 minutes. Finally, I mix again for an additional 5 minutes and it's now ready to pour. You have about 20 minutes of working time so there's no rush. Ensuring the resin is fully mixed is very important. The water makes quite the transformation and I love seeing how much life having a water feature brings to the scene. I'm being very careful not to accidentally pour water where I don't want it and I'm also doing my best to avoid bumping the trees and knocking green foam into the water. Unwanted bubbles can be removed with a heat torch. Now we just leave it to cure overnight. To remove the acrylic dam, I need to peel away the hot glue. The easiest way to do this is by painting some isopropyl alcohol over the glue. After a few seconds, you should be able to gently peel the glue away. Now the acrylic should easily peel away, leaving a nice smooth surface. There will likely be raised edges along the resin, but this can be removed with a sharp knife quite easily. We can also remove the plastic wrap from the dam wall. It's a little bit tedious trying to peel away all the plastic, but it was worth the effort to ensure the feature was protected from all those layers of plaster, paint and glue. To simulate the water flowing from the overflow pipes, I'm using a combination of aluminium wire, polyfiber, snowflakes and realistic water. The wire gets cut and bent to shape, trying to follow a natural arc in which the water would flow. Next, the wire is painted with white primer. Small tufts of polyfiber are prepared, 
so they are ready to attach to the wire. A small amount of Super 77 spray adhesive is applied to the wire and then the tufts of polyfiber are gently pressed on. I try to angle them in the direction of the flow that the water would naturally take. Not much is needed to get the effect. Once the layer of polyfiber is on, I give it another coat of spray adhesive. Next, a liberal coating of these snowflakes is sprinkled over the top. I also use some tweezers to pull and manipulate the polyfiber to create splashes and directional water flows. Depending on the volume of water, the process gets repeated a couple more times. The snowflakes are quite white and don't have much shine. So to fix that I drizzle over a generous amount of realistic water. This helps darken the snowflakes while at the same time creating a little bit of a shine and shimmer. And once dry, it will ensure the water effect is firm and can't accidentally be squashed or flattened. Once in place, a touch more realistic water is applied. This will also act as a bit of a glue holding it in place. The rest of the white water is created with roughly a one-to-one -one mix of water ripples and snowflakes. I also add a hint of white water highlights to dull it down a touch and it gets mixed into a thick paste. It's spread out and stippled over all the areas you want white water, especially around the base of the pipes where the main flow of water hits the river. I also make sure to add some white water ripple products around the pipes and anywhere I would expect there to be water residue. To add the water behind the dam, I'm going to create a sort of water shelf. Basically, I'm just simulating the very top layer of water with nothing underneath. In order to do this, I need to cut out a template so that I can make the shelf out of 1mm acrylic that will follow the contouring of the terrain. The template can be traced onto the acrylic. Using an ultrasonic knife like this makes light work of 1mm acrylic, otherwise a hobby saw will also work. A temporary box is formed below to ensure that when the water is added everything will stay level. Once the main piece is trimmed and glued so that it won't move, I add some acrylic walls around the edges to contain the resin. Again the hot glue is used to create a water sight teal. A, wa a water sight teal? Hot glue is used to create a watertight seal. The hot glue covers all the areas including the joints between the dam wall and also the rock terrain. Just like before, the resin is mixed and poured, allowing it to cure overnight. I found the first pour wasn't quite thick enough, so the next day I came back and did a second deeper pour, but this time I added some extra pigment to the resin so that it would be more opaque. Once the resin has had a good 24 hours to cure, I remove all the styrene support material and trim the raised edges similar to the river below. To add a subtle ripple effect on the dam surface, I'm using Woodland Scenic's water ripples. The entire surface is covered in a thin layer of the paste and then with a honeycomb sea sponge, I gently press it over the surface. It's only a very gentle application so that the bubbles aren't introduced into the paste. Afterwards, you'll be left with small textured ripples with a very high gloss. Now it's just the finishing touches, like adding some black styrene trim around the base to hide the visible polystyrene. And lastly, some extra details like 3D printed railing, the manhole cover, and a speed sign are added, as well as some additional weathering on the road surface. And we're done. That completes this awesome diorama build. Thank you to Scenorama for sponsoring this video. It can often be difficult to find certain products and materials to make amazing scenery, but with Scenorama and the range of products from Woodland Scenics, you too will be able to recreate fantastic dioramas and works of art. So be sure to check out the full range of kits and products at scenorama.woodlandscenics.com. Cheers, and thanks for watching.